discuss today your history with the Plan 9 operating system and the community, and some of the software that you've written for Plan 9 and fixes you've contributed. I was wondering if you could start by telling us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Hi, my name is Sigrid. I've been very much into 9 phones since I think 2012. Uh, it started as uh, mostly an interest in Go programming language, and then uh, I read sad news uh, about one of the members of Cat V community at the time on Go mailing list. I think it was Asal who wrote the original in, in and then I learned about Cat V. Uh, I learned about Nine Front, and basically. Since then, it all went downhill for me. <laughs> <laughs> I started writing C every day and night since then. Wow. How long do you think uh, it's been since you started doing that? Um, well, I started writing C in general since 2007. Wow. Yeah. That's quite wild. Uh, yeah, and specifically for uh, specifically Plan 9C, I started writing since 2012, and I don't think I wrote that much uh, of anything for Linux. Yeah. Since that, just as well. Yeah. Did you? So you wrote a lot of Linux C before coming here, so you had a fairly long background with C, you think? Yeah, uh, it was uh, with a lot of uh, things, mainly game dev, embedded. At some point, I had to touch U-Boot and Linux kernel itself. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so how is Plan 9C different for you then? Uh, do you prefer it over the way that POSIX usually does C? Because with POSIX and even, I guess, a little bit, Eight in Plan Nine, you get a much more close to the original, like kind of K and R style. Whereas on Plan Nine, it's a little different, and the libraries and the interfaces are a little different. How has that been for you? Has it been like a positive adjustment? Is there any major differences you like or dislike? I think it was extremely positive adjustment for me when i switched the the first when i started trying to write something in c of course it wasn't uh, graphical programs at first and i had to read a lot of man pages to <laughs> relearn how to do things but it uh, was just making way more sense than whatever the hell posix has now or <laughs> had before i guess it only keeps adding more stuff yeah. so yeah i was uh, i was liberated <laughs> uh what what do you think the first like major program you wrote for plan nine was then or a port i suppose is also perfectly valid is there like a big first project i they have a fairly long repertoire now but was there kind of a big first aha or the first comprehensive thing that really jumped out at you yeah it was the first thing that i started writing that uh, is big enough and useful. Uh, or, sorry, it was useful <laughs> back then. I guess now it's not useful at all. It was XMPP client with uh, with rooms functionality. Because oh, back sure. then I was heavy on uh, XMPP. I was sitting in many channels, talking to many people. I was uh, administrating one channel, so I kind of needed something to do whatever I was doing before, just in uh, in uh, nine front. So that right. was the first project that I wrote. It was just text interface, kind of like uh, what was it called? IRC, RC. Uh, yeah. Except it wasn't call. It wasn't written in RC. It was written in C. But right, still pretty simple interface. Mm. Uh, slash letter commands and stuff like that. Yeah. I would imagine that that involves uh, some like uh, threading or multi-process work, yeah? Yep, yeah. Uh, it did. I can't remember exactly if I used 
No, I have to use multiple threads, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's your thoughts on uh, how threading is handled in Plan 9? Do you Are you someone, I guess if you came from Go, you might have already been familiar with like uh, the way that the inter-process communication and whatnot works traditionally in Plan 9C, since they're kind of distantly related. Uh, is that something that you write around, or do you like the CSP style, or do you use a more traditional POSIX style of concurrency? To be honest, I kind of hate POSIX style. Uh, in POSIX for multi-threading, I would actually much more prefer for the threads to talk over some pipe or mm. whatever by not sharing any memory. It was all, always very confusing to write uh, in POSIX style. And CSP, uh, when I just started writing multi-threaded stuff for Nine Font, mm. uh, since I already had experience with Go, I was like, aha, so that's where it came from. Yeah. It was, of course, very easy to use from the, yeah. from the get-go. <laughs> How long do you think you were uh, writing Go then before you came over to Plan 9? Go's, I think, been public since, ooh, don't, don't quote me on this, maybe like roughly 2011 or so, maybe a bit earlier, 2008 even. Was that, uh, you mentioned, I think, that your Plan 9C started well after that. So were you in the Go community for quite a while? Uh, I was not writing anything work related in go at the time i was just playing with it uh, writing some personal console commands and stuff like that small hacking yeah. it, it wasn't anything serious i was just <laughs> very interested in the ways how uh, how go routines could synchronize mm -hmm. and send data over channels channels this uh first class citizen in a programming channel, uh, mm -hmm. programming language where you could send a channel over a channel <laughs> and do all kinds of weird stuff. That was very exciting. Yeah. How, do you do stuff like that uh, in C ever? With the very uh, intricate, Sending uh, channel over C. channel? No. <laughs> yeah, I guess I, I don't know. I guess I don't know if you can even do that in Plan 9C. That's something I haven't thought about, I think. Uh, yeah, you can. I mean, you can send the pointer <laughs> over one channel and then use the channel so yeah you can do that <laughs> that's fair i suppose yeah that makes sense do you have a maybe favorite library program abstraction present in plan nine or is it just the ubiquitous kind of file interface that made it appeal for you or is there like an individual favorite uh, i think my favorite would be bio but uh, mm. and maybe draw as well i really like draw oh yeah i think there's i mean there's a pretty decent amount of graphical software for plan i'm pretty sure i've seen some of the ones you've made uh did you have a good experience with draw i know that kind of dev draw at least in my thought is pretty different from the way that posix or e basically any kind of ui development i've experienced is executed was that a big learning curve for you? I know it was a big challenge for me. I don't think so, mostly because uh, before that I was involved in embedded programming and game dev. So there I already had almost kind of the same interface where I create an object, which is uh, an image, for example. Mm -hmm. and then I load uh, pixels onto that image and then I start composing one onto the other and i was doing ui in uh, OpenGL for uh, some arm embedded device uh, before yeah. so that was kind of like okay yeah it all makes sense it's almost the same except the difference is that with dev draw uh, all of these things they're piped right through let's just say file descriptor right yeah so yeah, that makes sense. Do, what uh, graphical programs have you written for Plan 9? Or it doesn't need to be a comprehensive list. Do you have any kind of a favorite list for that? Uh, favorite list? No, I think my favorite program that I use the most is, uh, I actually have no idea how would I pronounce it. I never said it out loud. Let's call it Zook. 
Oh yeah, Zoo. As yeah, in yeah. Uh, Zook box or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, it was. Uh, it came out uh, out of uh, frustration over what was that program in Nine Front? I think it was just called Juke or yeah. Jukebox, something like that. That never yeah. worked for me. Couldn't make it play anything. I tried fixing it. I couldn't, so I was like, okay, just gonna write my own. Yeah. Is that an approach you like to take? I mean, you have a fairly long list of things you've written for Plan 9. Do you typically take advantage of the finding something that you wish you could do, see differently or have done differently and just doing it? Totally. Like, um, I chose 9 Front as my main operating system. Uh, I tried it for many years. Unfortunately, I couldn't ever do it until now, mostly mm. because there was no VMX. Now there is VMX, so I don't really care to have uh, any Linux or OpenBSD running on uh, real hardware anymore. I can just run it in VMX. So now I just started one by one writing whatever programs I need in my life. Of course, it's music player and video player because that's mostly what I do, if you right. can imagine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That makes sense. Um, so do you think that VMX was a big part of what allowed you to kind of adopt nine front or even just plan nine in general as like a daily driver kind of using it every day or using it close to every day and you using it for the bulk of your development do you think vmx is a big part of that i know for ori it was definitely the new ssh client is what he had pointed out is do you think vmx was the big enabler for you yeah um Totally. Before that, I I think I would agree with Ori that SSH client, a good one, was uh, also a really good point uh, where I started mainly doing stuff directly from Nine Front. Back then, it was uh, uh, using draw term. I was running Nine Front in uh, KVM on the same laptop. Right. I tried doing uh, weird stuff like carrying around two laptops connected over Ethernet when I was working at Spotify, but uh, that was not exactly the most functional way of working, I would say. Right. That makes sense. Now it's VMX, so that's yeah. very easy for me. I just have one laptop for everything. Yeah, that's pretty nice. It's a good time. Is there anything you wish that VMX did that it doesn't do right now? Uh, I can say I wish something it didn't do, which it <laughs> does right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that <laughs> using using way too much CPU time on context switching back and forth and hitting uh, the living hell out of my laptop so I can't <laughs> keep it on my lap. So yeah. I have to turn off vmx once i'm done <laughs> deploying to to google cloud or something right. like that <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah, it is kind of a, it is kind of, kind of a intensive program i think i only got vmx running once i just don't have a lot of hardware that supports it at the moment but it's nice to know that it gets so much use do you think that uh so it's, you, you, you boot up VMX every now and then. Uh, do, what is the usual workflow you have on Plan 9? Do you use like SAM, uh, Acme, or do you have a lot of supporting scripts that you rely on to automate parts of what you do? I use SAM for writing anything. I don't use any other text editors, uh, maybe besides vi sometimes uh, if uh, if i'm connected using ssh or if i happen to use something in vm in uh, running in virtual machine and on vmx where mm -hmm. i don't necessarily want to use ssh uh, otherwise i don't really have that many scripts that automate anything mostly because um, um I'm not very much into automation. I really like doing stuff manually. Recently, right. I started adding more uh, automation to my workflow mm -hmm. 
just to ease up some things that I keep doing all the time, like, uh, for example, properly closing a virtual machine that just exited so the VMX doesn't keep running and it's eating uh, the memory. Right. Uh, the, the script is called just VM quit. <laughs> VM quits and it quits and that's enough for me. Very nice. Yeah. It's nice. Do you like RC a lot for scripting on Plan 9? I guess there's not a lot of op options that they leave you with, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, unfortunately. No, I think I hate it very much. That's yeah. why I prefer to write C uh, rather than RC. But I mean, it's fine for something extremely simple, but I'm very much not into writing anything that is longer than maybe like 30 lines right. in RC. I think when it gets to that point, it's just a sign it gets to a do painful. it with some other tool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you write a lot of like pretty short, like, I don't know, ballpark sub, like 100, 200 line utility C programs just floating around. Exactly. Yeah, nice. That is a pretty cozy way to go about making uh, your day-to-day -day life easier. Is there anything then that, uh, I guess if you don't like RC very much, is there any shell scripts that you do like? Or scripting languages, I mean. There's one that you preferred more that maybe RC could learn from, or is it just that scripting languages as a interface aren't what you're looking for? I, I think, yeah, the latter, because, um, I don't know. My problem with scripting languages like shell and RC is mostly related to error control. If there is an error, I'm... I tend to just in the beginning of the script set it to fail on any error whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of like, in my opinion, the best error handling you can get in a <laughs> shell script. Yeah. Because it does, it's, it's not easy to do. Right. Uh, I wrote one huge script just for fun in, uh, in POSIX shell, so it, it mm -hmm. wasn't even bash, it was using specifically POSIX features at most, and was supposed to be portable. Uh, it was really hard to make it portable, it was a script that would <laughs> take a flag image, a queue sheet, and split it into many files. It could go recursively over a huge directory like music collection, and do oh, sure. all these things, but uh, like it's it's huge and it's terrible. I rewrote it later in Go. It became <laughs> much simpler, much faster, without any of the bugs uh, that uh, this shell script had. So right, I was just like, okay, I, I guess I won't write any shell scripts anymore. Right. What was your experience then with uh, other high level languages, kind of above C, even if C is arguably kind of high level? But before Go, was there anything you used a lot, like Python or something like that? And even with Go, uh, like, was there anything you were exploring at the time other than Go in terms of high-level languages? Now, at the time, before I started being interested in Go, also partially the reason why I started being interested in Go was that I was writing a, a lot of Erlang. Oh, uh, sure. And it it was just a bit different from Go. Not I necessarily better or worse. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say exactly. It's can't really say if it's high level or low level. Airlane, it, it is. Yeah. It is high high level in a sense that you have all these primitives like supervisors that, that uh, take care of your uh, logic being restarted properly. Right. Uh, mailboxes, or how you would call them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so Erlang, then I was also interested in Haskell quite a lot, but unfortunately, uh, since I couldn't apply it practically at work, my mm -hmm. time was very much limited with it, and I had no use with it 
in uh, most of my hobby projects because the thing that I found it most useful for is uh, parsing, code generation, and uh, that's kind of the only thing I was using it for. That makes sense. Were you using Erlang at work then, or did you use Go at work or anything like that? Uh, I used Erlang before, then I found mm -hmm. Go. I was still using Erlang, but I started uh, shifting towards preferring Go, and I started doing a lot of propaganda <laughs> at, uh, at my work. Back then, it was Klarna. Right. Uh, it was a, probably a bad idea because the whole company was uh, basically hiring anyone who would be able to write a single line of Erlang back then. <laughs> so all programmers were hired and not a single one I knew who was interested in Go at the time. <laughs> I got I got a few people interested, but uh, it didn't uh, it didn't go any further. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is kind of hard though. Yeah, adoption is pretty difficult. I know in my current job, the uh, approach to Go is uh, pretty distant and looked far upon. I think right now Rust is more in their lines of sight, but it's a mostly C++ programmers looking to escape. So, yeah. Now I write a lot of Go. Yeah. Uh, my work, uh, I switched from, I was hired as a Java programmer. I didn't write that much Java. I just <laughs> switched over to writing any, everything in Go and everyone seems happy. That's good. Nice. Do you still write Go on Plan 9 pretty often then? Uh, no, actually. I got the... <laughs> I got the, the general idea that <laughs> writing in Go for Plan 9 is considered... Um, how do you put it? <laughs> Sacrilege? Yeah, it's like committing treason. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's better to, to write in C, so I just, I, I was just writing C since I was already comfortable with it. I was a bit yeah. surprised with the binary sizes, to be honest. So that was okay. one of the reasons that I was not writing Go for Plan 9. Uh, Go binary sizes on Plan 9 or just in general? Uh, in general. Yeah, that makes sense. Have you, you, have you interfaced with the... Plan 9 a out binary format at all in the past? Um, nope. <laughs> That's okay. Not that I can remember. Sure. Um, so speaking of committing treason, you have a port called treason. Do you want to talk about that and how that went? I think that's a fairly significant contribution that people have been waiting for for a long time. I can talk about it. It's mostly just a port of several libraries mm -hmm. uh, for each video format it's libvpx for vp8 vp9 uh, dav1 d for av1 format it's mm -hmm. the new one that it's all of your cpu while showing <laughs> the same quality of video very useful <laughs> and uh, another one is open h Two six four, obviously that's for H two six four, and the rest is uh, it's just uh, kind of like front end that right. is called treason. It's written in C. It just uses all these libraries to decode uh, images and just draws them on the window. Mm -hmm. And another program that is also in that uh, treason bucket mm -hmm. is MCFS. It uh, stands for Multimedia Container File System. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, it's not really a file system yet. <laughs> uh, it just, just dumps the data out to standard output, but that was enough for now. Uh, I right. will make it into a file system later. For now, I didn't really have the reason for it, but. Right. That will need to happen for basic 
controls like going backwards or forward, pausing uh, for for playing streams as well. Right. Just didn't have time to do it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Do how do you imagine MCFS being laid out? Have you written a lot of file systems before? Have you this kind of one of the first big ones? Um. I wrote some before. I don't think the ones I wrote were made public because I was writing them uh, when I was working at Spotify. I was writing them as a Hack Week project uh, just right. to showcase how Spotify as uh, the whole system could function if Spotify would use 9P. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was trying to impress as many people as possible, but mostly was just my teammates who would uh, be impressed so <laughs> it didn't right. it didn't go further mm. and after that I, I can't really remember if i wrote any other right. file systems specifically that were made public right i think i'm saying fast would be the uh, kind of first big one. Oh, okay it, I mean, I wrote some before, just right, for, right. Some, for whatever reason, I can't remember which one these were. I would need to open <laughs> uh, a web page with my projects to right. to remember that. That's okay. Um, yeah. Do you like the file system abstraction very much? Do you take advantage of it a lot? I and mean, it's kind of how everything is served up, but is it something that you think works very well for you? Yeah, I think so. I'm not exactly happy with the, with the interface to those libraries. I think it's, uh, I mean, there are two kind of two interfaces for that. One very low level when you, where you can uh, do basically whatever you want. You can also, by using this library, you can also shoot yourself in the foot in so many ways. Right. And... Uh, there is also a bit the higher level library that works with uh, basically static file systems where you can define a, a file tree from the get go without doing too much. Right. And that one, oh yeah, actually that one is uh, the one that I used. 9p file? And before. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think it was easier. Uh, Otherwise, I used the low level. Now I remember the, right. where I used it substantially. It's the X4 uh, file system for Plan 9 with uh, reading and writing. Nice. That's nice. where I used it. Got it. That makes sense. So let's see. Go through a list of. Are there, how do you feel about lib9p file? Do you remember it very well? As Moody and I, a long time ago, had written a file system in 9p file, and we had tried to do something that 9p file didn't want. I don't remember what it was, but we ended up breaking the interface a little bit and ran into all sorts of ref counting errors along the way. Uh, do you think that 9p file works pretty well? I think there's a few other people in the community that feel have mixed feelings about it and prefer to just use lib9p directly. I think the problem with 9p file specifically is that it's too simple. It's perhaps too high level. So if you start with 9p file and you wrote something and then you realize, oh, I need to do this specific thing, uh, there's just no way you can do it in 9p file that easily. Right. And you start switching over to to just 9p with a low level interface and then you start struggling because there you're basically on your own with what was it section 5 manuals <laughs> yeah uh, trying section to understand five. how 9p works in general so you don't make mistakes and you still keep doing them all the time yeah that makes sense yeah it's kind of hard and section 5 is a little cryptic i think i mean, it's probably the best reference we have right now that's just fully written out, but I think uh, it takes a few passes for someone to get everything they need out of it usually. Yeah, it has a few gotchas as well that just <laughs> keep, keeps stalking me all the time. 
like this uh, one specific thing is where you're providing reading of a directory and I keep forgetting that you might eventually receive an offset that is lower than the last one mm -hmm. that you received. And you, you basically need, if you're, for example, if you're exporting a real directory through 9P in your file server, you need to start reading the directory all the way from the beginning to reach that specific offset that uh, the client is asking for. I think right. that's, uh, that's the issue that I face a lot and I keep forgetting about it. <laughs> yeah, I, you've put a lot of fixes out, I think, for just various things. Is there any like patch that you submitted or put in that you really are just really glad was able to get merged in or you're really thankful for uh, that even you put out? Is there something that you remember fondly or anything like that? Yeah, the, my my most favorite contribution to Nine Front Aber is uh, Control B for Sam. <laughs> you can go to Command Buffer by by a key press. I was very scared to <laughs> to, to pull to push it because like it's uh, it's not mouse control. But, right. I mean, we already had it for for. Windows, so yeah, why not? Windows, yeah, yeah, and then and then uh, Control G was added. Uh, I can't remember whose patch that was, but it was also very useful. Yeah, see, yeah, that's nice. Uh, do you have a, any? And yeah, it's okay if you don't or don't want to talk about it. But do you have any like fixes that you haven't provided that? you feel might be too treasonous, but you use on your own time? Uh, fixes, I wouldn't say so. It's mostly just treasonous uh, theming <laughs> and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that uh, I'm pretty sure I will never be accepted in Einfront and I'm not even trying to, <laughs> to push it because right. like, uh, I'm not it, sure even I am going to use it in a few years. I might give up on that. Yeah. I know there had been a bit of a theming effort from, oh man, I think it was Moody and Mischief, where they made a full library for it and a bunch of patches for various things in Ninefront. Maybe they got merged into Nine Ants. I don't remember. But it was. No, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, oh, well. And the, if the repository is somewhere in the archive, but I think they uh, died when the mercurial repositories on Bitbucket died. Yeah, I, I never used uh, this approach. I don't think it's going to work well <laughs> because there is there is just too many programs and they all need to be patched. And every time they change, the patches might have to be updated. Right. Yes, yes. This is kind of the trouble with all of that. Uh, if you had, do you have any advice for someone that would want to submit fixes or I, you've got a decent number already. So is somebody wanted to kind of get started contributing back, is there any advice you'd have or any guidelines you think that are unwritten and might be helpful to someone who can develop and can try to fulfill either bounties or fixes? Is there anything you'd say for them? Uh, brace yourselves. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the main point would be that whatever you do, uh, if it, even if you think that people won't like it, you can still do it. It doesn't matter. You can keep it as your local copy. You can share it with other people. Mm -hmm. Other people might find it useful, even though it won't be in nine front. Uh, you might think that uh, no one will want it, and then it will be merged to my font. So, yeah. I, I just say don't have any expectations and <laughs> keep on hacking, keep on reading manual pages, and keep asking questions, however stupid you think they are. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. I agree. I agree. I hope that people find it within themselves to 
put things out even if it might not be merged. So the community you're pretty closely involved with that might actually follow this, just make it and put it out and make it available. It's like the public grid. Uh, do you like the public grid very much? How long do you think you've been floating around that area? And is there anything you've put out on the grid that you share in kind of this, not necessarily intending to be merged manner or as like a completed thing, but maybe it's up somewhere floating around grid space? Uh, I joined grid this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I was putting a few patches there at some point, but now I'm mostly just just talking there. Sometimes I might put a picture, something, right, to share it. But uh, I don't, I don't really use the grid disk that right. much for anything. Yeah, that's fair. Is there anything you wish was hooked up to the grid that we that the grid doesn't have right now? Mm, I actually don't think so. I think the only uh, thing that grid is uh, missing that uh, is uh, maybe more people. I know that <laughs> m some people might disagree with me. The <laughs> popular vs unpopular thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I think it uh, it just needs more people uh, to be there, talking and collaborating. But right. uh, as it is right now, I'm extremely happy with uh, grid and people on grid. Right. Yeah. I guess kind of by extension of that, is there anything you wish Plan Nine or Nine Front had that it doesn't have right now? Hmm. I mean, it doesn't uh, have to even be I, practical, but... I think it has everything. It even has, uh, how many? Three browsers now. <laughs> At yeah. least three. If you count the one that converts HTML to plain text, there is right. even more. Right. So you've uh, used the NetSurf port then? Yeah. Uh, I started using it since uh, VMX keeps my laptop hot. I'm trying now to patch NetSurf, so it's uh, it's more easier for me to use. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just gonna use the VMX uh, less and less just for deploying stuff. Yeah. What's uh, most of what you do on Plan Nine then? Is it just writing these tools as you want them, or do you talk to people most? all the time through the computer or is there like a any kind of recreational programming or activities that you partake in through plan nine uh, I, I think for me specifically uh, nine front is mostly about talking to other people mm -hmm. uh, it's it's great maybe just a bit of irc not that much mm -hmm. uh, full-time job where i write a lot of go in some and the rest is just recreational and therapy style c programming where i can get away from all the shitty uh technologies of right. uh, today's world yeah kind of a programming zen garden yeah exactly yeah it's very nice that way i kind of agree it's uh plan nine feels like kind of a kind of like a little garden that you can step away from so much more of the software programming world and find a lot there. It's Very... like a operating system for meditation. It doesn't yeah. have much, but it doesn't really need much. Right. Yeah, exactly. So you write Go and Sam, do you have like a supporting programs for that? Like, do you, I know for the Acme Go people, they usually have a little Swiss army knife tool or toolbox of stuff to automate parts of like compilation or stuff like that. Do you do that or do you just use the normal go tools and the regular expression parts of Sam to do most of the heavy lifting? I do just that. I use Sam on its own, uh, Sam expressions to do a bit of refactoring. Right. Um, that's really it. I was doing the same with Java. Um, oh, yeah. I did have 
just a few scripts to ease up uh, my work. One of the scripts was you could select uh, an expression in a Java file, and then it would go to command buffer and uh, write a really small command. The script would go through the current Java project directory and search mm. for that definition where it's uh, where it's defined uh, and would yeah. jump there. That was uh, a bit helpful. Yeah. But otherwise, it's, it was just Sam and no other tools. Right. That makes sense. That's pretty impressive, especially writing Java and Sam. That feels... And the little bit of Java I've written, I've only written a small amount of it outside of an IDE. Uh, certainly not with something like Sam. And that's very nice. Do you find the Sam language very powerful? Does it suit your needs? Is there anything you wish it did or didn't do? Yeah, it's uh, really powerful for me. I think it needs to be accessible out of outside of Sam. Yeah. Uh, I think the idea of having something like that in C, where uh, you don't necessarily write it as string commands, but uh, maybe function calls. Right or something would be very useful for string processing. Uh, so it doesn't look that low level uh, with uh, regexps and stuff like that. And I think one thing that I'm missing in some command language is uh, when you put expressions in curly brackets, those expressions uh, must never kind of work on the same. Uh, uh, they shouldn't change the text that is going to be changed by other expressions in mm -hmm. those curly brackets or something like that. Right. I can't really remember, but uh, I think that's mostly uh, the only thing that I miss. Yeah. So Sam is a library. I think that's something that's been off and on discussed on CatV for quite a while. Is that something that you'd like to see written? I mean, you expressed oh, yeah. interest already. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. I think it would be the uh, best thing after sliced bread. Do you think it would be very difficult to implement just from a distant perspective? Mm, it depends. I didn't really look at, I didn't look that much uh, right. at some uh, command language source code. I added a few commands myself, but I didn't explore it to full extent. I think it would be easy. Oh, that's uh, good. Sorry, what? No, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh, I think it would be easy to rip it out in some way. I don't think writing it from scratch would be the best idea. Uh, maybe it would be, but you would need to make sure that it does exactly what it does in Sam. Otherwise, it probably shouldn't be called libsam or something. <laughs> and if that library exists, then Sam should just use it. And yeah. other programs could use it just as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Could add it to NetSurf to That's... find all the pictures and, I don't know, run Pico on them to invert the images or something. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you use like the s sam command ever? Do you like command line sam for like scripts or anything like that? I used it a bit. Uh, mostly I was using it for some kind of refactoring. But uh, for that to be useful for me, I have to keep doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, that doesn't usually happen. Usually it's uh, pretty small commands that I will just type in some command window itself. Uh, I won't really reuse it for streaming some. Right. That makes sense. Is there anything you wish Sam did differently than what it does now is do you dream of a editor that oh, has like yes. sam's language but isn't sam or maybe better i know ori wants to write a new editor of some sort probably inspired by sam yeah i think one thing that i really dislike about sam is the 
the infamous crawl bar. Ah, uh, yeah. It doesn't scroll. It just drives me insane every time. <laughs> and yeah. to add to already a lot of pain when you expect that the keys would work better when you press up and down. It's also actually I think worse than using a scroll bar. So it's just it's just terrible. Someone please do something. <laughs> Not me, someone else. Right, right. Yeah, there's, there's probably a reason that it stayed that way and not just been touched up quickly. Yeah. And I think everyone who actually tried to fix scrolling just ended up uh, giving up on nine front altogether. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was a long time ago, but I remember someone trying to do a lot of fix-ups on Sam. Maybe it was mischief and just kind of giving up on Sam as a whole. Maybe it wasn't, I don't remember, but it was, yeah, I think they had a really rough time with it. Yeah, I can imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's been uh, mostly Sam up till now. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on Acme then, since it's not the preferred child, but is it just, uh, do you, you just prefer Sam to it, or is there anything explicitly wrong with Acme, or do you just not prefer it? Uh, I used Acme right before Sam. Mm mostly because I saw a lot of Acme screenshots. I didn't really see many of <laughs> some screenshots <laughs> at the time. So I was like, okay, that's the text editor that everyone is using. And I started using it. And then right. uh, in Cat V, I started seeing, oh, Acme this, Acme that, use Sam. Yeah. And uh, I didn't really like Sam in the beginning. I thought it mm -hmm. was very cumbersome. Like It was just, okay, you get a blue window, you get a yellow window. Great. <laughs> what should awesome. I do with that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, then I very much appreciated it after I my uh, project started growing to more than one uh, file. Right. Where I had to use a laptop with pretty small screen resolutions. So right. my Acme didn't really fit that much. Every time I wanted to switch to a different file, I had to go through. Uh, many windows to try to find where where this file is even right because uh, I don't know it was just a mess so I tried some took me a while to get used to it after Acme but yeah it's yeah. really good yeah 10 out of 10 would recommend <laughs> nice nice wow I uh... So do you think that like the way Plan 9 software is written in C or otherwise, does that affect the way that you've written code outside of Plan 9, maybe at work or in Go or anything like that? Do you steal like naming conventions or stylisms or anything like that? Is there anything you've adopted? Oh, yeah. Uh, I basically adopted Plan 9 style in whatever I write for the outside of Plan 9 world. Mostly it's um also the like small wrappers that i write for network handling uh like in plan 9 it's uh, dial i have right. a dial for linux and uh, many other things that i found useful that i took out of plan 9 and just copy pasted in uh, every project uh, that i wrote in c for for linux after that Oh, sure. uh, yeah, of course, uh, variable naming, function naming, the size of uh, the source code, it decreased considerably because instead of using three words, I started using, for example, few letters of every word. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, now my, my programs are much smaller than before. Right. Nice. Do you, when you develop outside of Plan 9, do you use like Plan 9 port or do you use more standard POSIX stuff or do you have a preferred I, compiler or anything like that? Yeah, I don't use Plan 9 port mostly because I want the projects to be still um, changeable by people who are not specifically aware of Plan 9 interfaces. So. Right. Maybe for things that are just easy to wrap into Plan 9 uh, style interface, like dial, 
I will leave it as is uh, without using Plan 9 port. So I will just write my own implementation. But for everything else, I use the standard POSIX interface. I think it's, uh, it's better to keep uh, using whatever is standardized on the platform you're developing for, just the same way as I wouldn't really use pthreads and uh, nine forms, right. even if it's some like. Hmm, if I'm porting uh, the software, I wouldn't try to replace pthreads with something completely different. I would just try to repeat the same interface. But for new software, uh, I would never use something from the outside but it's just personal preference that makes really. sense yeah yeah all totally valid so then do you think that plan 9 has affected the way you view or interact with other software significantly yeah uh i started uh, feeling very much desperate about most of the software so in a way you could say that plan 9 made me uh sad <laughs> okay but also happy because uh, i can uh, easily write whatever i dislike or miss yeah for nine font and just use it so not not such a big deal for me right so it's not a large barrier do you think it's very easy to just write a general use or general application piece of software on plan nine definitely in uh, the problem with other operating systems is because they're so big and they they have so many different ways to do the same thing starting from audio libraries or ui libraries uh, you just get lost even before you start start writing anything you have to choose this library or that library, every single one of them has specific issues. Uh, you might dislike one like the other one. There is just too many things to consider. And right. once you start, because there are so many moving variables, um, it just takes enormous amount of time to develop anything. Right. Uh, since it wasn't implemented from scratch with rethinking none of them uh, i mean none of the operating systems uh, posix interface kept adding stuff because of that uh, it's really hard in plan 9 you have a really small set of standard libraries very small uh, amount of functions in each one of them and yeah, it's really easy to just read a few man pages and start writing things and just look at other programs. Right. The best thing about Plan 9 is uh, that it's self-contained. So uh, whenever you have 9Front installed, you were basically, you got yourself a file system for which you can develop and learn everything from without ever connecting to the internet. You already have everything there. That is pretty impressive, yeah. There's, do, you, do you find then that just reading Plan 9C is very... Uh, do you find like the libraries are intuitive and the C style works for you then? A fair bit, it seems. Some of the libraries... Uh, I mean, all the source code in, uh, in Nine Front is a bit different, mostly because it was written at different times by different people but uh, most of it makes sense looks good is mm -hmm. very short and understandable and uh, the parts that are not are uh, well you don't really have to read it you can either use uh, the api of it or just find some other source of uh, source of source for education right do you have a favorite piece of software you've read on Plan 9 or a favorite like library in the standard library or something like that? Mm -hmm. Either most Not useful to... or entertaining or horrifying, all valid options. I mean, I think all the, uh, all the horrifying 
stuff is external. It was <laughs> added to Ninefront to do stuff that Ninefront probably didn't care much to do right. on its own or for the lack of alternatives like Ghost Script comes to mind. <laughs> Yeah, Python, <laughs> Mercurial, all that stuff. Do Otherwise, you... uh, I can I can't really remember anything that horrible. Yeah, that's good. Do you, are you excited for the shift from Mercurial to Git if and when it happens? Oh yeah, I can't wait to get rid of uh, Python <laughs> and Mercurial. I already got used to Git nine quite a lot. Uh, I stopped using Linux Git by now. All my projects are, like uh, work projects, are Git 9 usage based. Nice. And I, I'm really scared of using Mercurial because to me it seems like one wrong move and I have no idea what to do anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Like if I, if I accidentally make a commit, I always have to specify every single file that I'm going to put into that commit because my local tree is full of uh, changes <laughs> everywhere. So right. if I forget to specify the files, it's going to be a disaster. Yeah, I, I've i definitely run into that before when I've tried to like build a patch and something I just did not want is there. Or if I made the mistake of making local modifications that interfere with the sys update later and not boxing them off into a branch or something. Yeah. Nice. Is there any software that's not within the Plan 9 ecosystem that you really enjoy or admire that you don't even necessarily have to wish it was in Plan 9, but anything you really like? Like uh, some people are really fond of Smalltalk or VMS, things like that. Uh, I think the things that I miss is most is mostly related to multimedia. So, in my opinion, for me personally, it would be uh, a decent image editor, like not uh, as a programming language, but more as a conventional style, where I could use a drawing tablet and stuff like that. And another. Software that I miss is software for audio editing. Uh, uh, I don't think it exists in, in any way on Plan 9. So those, those are two main points for me, because I do a lot of this and a lot of that, but still there isn't uh, that much on uh, Nine Front for me. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you want to answer, what do you do most of your auto edit? audio editing for with do you make music or anything like that i do a bit of music sometimes but uh, right now it's mostly uh recording vocals and then layering them together with uh, music track uh, mm -hmm. for the music that i didn't write my uh, didn't write myself but just recording vocals filtering out all the noise making sure everything is leveled properly Right. Uh, re removing all the clicks and pops. Yeah. Stretching, applying effects, all that stuff uh, that I do is uh, non-existent in Nine Front. Right. Is that something you'd be interested in writing? Oh yeah, totally. Uh, I started writing one small part of it. Uh, maybe a bit unrelated. It was just drawing. Uh, uh, waveforms. Mm -hmm. I was trying to see if it would be even possible to have something like Audacity for Nine Font at the time, and mm. it's, yeah, the answer is uh, yes, totally. Drawing nice. uh, waveforms uh, fast is possible, even with a draw term over the network. It uh, it will still be very much usable. Nice. That's exciting. I would love to see something like that. Yeah. Did you you mentioned a drawing tablet before? Do you like doing digital art or anything like that? Uh, I wouldn't say it's art. <laughs> it's just <laughs> me holding a, uh, a pen, trying to 
to do something with it. Right. Uh, I'm not I'm not a very good drawer, but I would definitely do more of it if it would be available in in some way in nine font. Right now the tablet that I have is working, but it has a really low resolution. So every time I move a pen it jumps uh, I think like four pixels <laughs> instead of just one. So right. uh I have to zoom in a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. And and mostly draw pixel by pixel. Uh, that's not very useful. <laughs> and tedious. it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have a pressure detection at all. So it's just if either you press it or you don't press it. Ah, uh, sure. Yeah. Well, uh, that's uh, about all the questions that I have. Uh, do we want to try to take some live ones if we have any? I can look at Discord or Twitch chat and pull questions from there. I didn't have any sent to me, but we can wait and see if anyone has anything they'd like to ask. Huh? Cool. Give a few minutes for that. Well, I had a really good time, Sigrid. Thank you so much for taking the time for this. I really appreciate it. Is there anything else you'd like to go over? Or are you good? Uh, yeah, I'm really uh, very much good. Thank awesome. you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, hopefully we get to do even more of these in the future. And I really appreciate you sharing with us. Yep. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.